This video is going to show you how to adjust data for inflation. It's important to adjust any dollar values if you're trying to compare any data that's three or more years apart. This is a perfect example. This is University of Minnesota tuition rates from 1960 to 2016. And it's completely unfair for us to say that tuition back in 1960 was $200 and it's now $12,500 um, and that how much of a change, what's that percentage change? Infl adjusting for inflation, what that does is removes inflation as a factor for the increase. So any increase we see remaining after adjusting for inflation, we can call that uh, any change over and above the rate of inflation. In this case, we can say the university you know, increased it above what they needed to just to keep pace with inflation. Let's talk about um, how, what the formula is for calculating this. What we're going to use is the consumer price index numbers for each year. You can get those from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Let's go look at that right now. So the BLS webpage um, has a bunch of databases here. Um, I usually use this all urban consumers and just click on top picks. Nice and qu quick couple of clicks, it's going to get you there. And then over here, we pick what um, which CPI we want to use. Uh, most people use the all, US City Average All Items. Alternatively, you could pick one for your region if you're in a particular part of the country. Sometimes I like to do the Midwest region since I'm in Minnesota. Once you pick something here, you push Retrieve Data button. It's going to give you a, a table. And up here at the top, you can change the range of years that it's giving you. So we can go back to, we can go way back, but let's go to 1960 and I only need to go through 2016 and I'm going to say include annual averages because right now if you look at this table this is just the CPI for each month of the year and then the halfway points the first half and the second half um, I like to use the annual it's a little bit cleaner especially when you are dealing with annual years like we are here so there's the CPI all the way down to 1960 and you can see that there's a lovely little download Excel file which is what I did to get our data. I've already put that CPI in here, and I think I used the Midwest one. You can see it's a little different than the national one. Um, I added it to this table using a VLOOKUP formula, uh, which you can learn how to do in another video that I'll have on the site. Um, but I lined it up so that the CPI from each year is lined up with each year of data, including the most recent year of data. So the way the formula works is that we, we take the most current CPI number or whatever year you want the dollar values to represent. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to convert all those older values into 2016 dollars to match our most current value that we have. You could, however, turn them into current year date values and get your mo the most recent CPI you can get and you would need to add that to your spreadsheet on another in another cell somewhere. Um, so that's going to be the start of our formula. I want to take that and divide it by CPI then, which means whatever the CPI was in whatever year that we're converting. And then we're going to multiply that by the old value. So how that's going to work here is that for 1960, we're going to, our formula is going to start with CPI now, which is uh, in cell F63, the 2016 CPI, divided by CPI then, which is in cell F7, and then multiply that by the value we want to convert. In this case, we're just going to adjust the undergrad resident number. Um, note, note that we're always going to use the same number for CPI now. We're always going to use this value right here. So we're going to lock that in using um, dollar signs, a, a lock in our formula. And remember, we've got two mathematical calculations here, so we need some parentheses. So we're going to say um, equal sign open parentheses, CPI now, which is going to be right here, F63, 
divided by F7, close parentheses. And now let's go in here and we're going to lock F63. So dollar sign F, dollar sign 63 divided by F7. So that's the CPI now divided by CPI then, multiply by the old value, which is in B7. Hit enter. So this is showing us that the that $200 that students paid back in 1960 is the equivalent of $1,700 in 2016 dollars. So if we can copy this down, we should now have newly adjusted figures for all of our years. You'll see this is coming out as dollars because this I already had this column formatted as dollars. If yours is not, you just right mouse click and choose format cells. Mine's set to custom, but you can set it to currency and get dollar values. Also note that if you're adjusting it to match the most recent piece of data that you have, that most recent one is not going to be any different. It's still going to be that 12,546. Um, if you were to use Let's say you were to use a, the 2020 value and put that down here and use that as your now value, then yes, that 2016 value would be something different. And then you would be able to say, in today's dollars, here's how much the students would have paid. Um, which one you use, if you use today as in the current, actual current year, or you use whatever your last year of data is. You know, Usually we don't get data in <laughs> super real time. Um, it, it just that's just going to be dependent on the wording that you use in the story.